Tad Bhakta Namo Namaha. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda <coughs> Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Ramo Ramo. Okay. So, um, we, we're starting some classes for some new people. Makeshri said there will be like 20 new people, but only one person has come. <laughs> so, all devotees may find this uh, a bit elementary, but anyway, still we can hear again and again, no problem. So, Julie's listening? Yes. <laughs> okay, don't go away, right? Because you're the main reason the class is happening. So, today we're going to hear a little bit about this Bhagavad Gita. There is 108 main Upanishads, of which Bhagavad Gita is considered the topmost. Why? Because Upanishads means that which brings you near to Isha, or God, is like the Upanishad. So are the Upanishads spoken about God? But the Bhagavad Gita or the Gita Upanishad, that is spoken by God. <laughs> so it must be the best. Because ultimately who will give the best information on God? That will be God himself. So. This Bhagavad Gita is only 18 chapters of the Mahabharata. Mahabharata is 400,000 verses long, and Bhagavad Gita is 700 of those verses. So it's like the jewel in the gold mine. So, Bhagavad Gita Krishna discusses five types of knowledge in Bhagavad Gita. Five types of knowledge. The first is Atma Tattva, knowledge of the soul. Our first is general knowledge, actually. Right? Krishna even gives general knowledge. Don't eat too much, don't sleep too much, be equal in enjoyment and recreation, like this. Don't be too much excessive in any one field, like general knowledge. Lust and greed are the gateways to hellish life. This is all general knowledge. From contemplation of the senses comes attachment. When attachment becomes more thick, it turns into lust. When lust is not fulfilled, then becomes anger. When anger becomes very thick, very strong, then you cannot remember anymore what to do or what not to do, what is good or bad. Who am I? Who is anyone? One forgets everything. So from anger comes complete forgetfulness. Then one again. This is all general knowledge. Krishna also speaks. Then more specific knowledge is Atma Tattva. Who are we, Julie? Julie, who are you? Are you only the body? Are you the mind? Are we the senses? Or are we something else? I see mind and senses are material, so we cannot be that. Because mind and senses have no consciousness. No? Without the soul. So, this is, gen this is the beginning Atma Tattva means, who am I? Who is the real self? I am not this body or this mind, I am the soul. Then comes Brahma Tattva, Paramatma Tattva, and Bhagavad Tattva. These five Tattvas Krishna speaks in Bhagavad Gita. So today we want to hear a little bit from the third chapter. The third chapter is Karma Yoga. Karma means the science of action. So everyone in this world is very tightly bound by the actions and the reactions to those actions. Cause and effect. So karma means karotuma, 
any actions which I do that is called karma. And every karma or every action has a reaction. So this karma is the, is the cause of the cycle of birth and death. Like everything we're doing now, Julie, this body, you know, our material situation, this is all a result of previous life's activity. So what we did in the past, we are now experiencing. And the activities we are now performing, that is making our future. So we should understand, how can I act in such a way that I never receive a material body again? Right? This body is a result of past action. This body is, has six type of six transformations. Birth, old age, birth, growth, producing offspring, decline and death, six changes of the body. Therefore, this body, which we now currently think is a source of enjoyment, this body is actually the source of all misery. Right? Can you hear Yuri? Right. This body has many tribulations. You know, hunger, thirst, sleep, disease. You know, so this body is actually the cause of all suffering and misery. So how can I act in such a way that I never receive a material body again? That means the soul now achieves liberation from birth and death. Right? The Russians are all listening to the translation? Prema? Who's listening to the translation? They are listening, but they are recorded now. Oh. And after they will upload it just okay. have to... There's many Russians there looking a little confused. Anyway. So, in this world, Krishna speaks about three types of activity. Karma, vikarma, and akarma. Vikarma means sinful activity. Everyone understands that. Drinking alcohol, eating meat, out, marriage outside, sex outside marriage, stealing, deception, giving false witness, violence towards other living entities. This is called vikarma. The result of vikarma, the result of sinful activities in this life one suffers and also in the future lives one suffers. Especially, Julie, one performs very bad activities, then one may lose the human form of life. One may be pushed into the lower forms of life like animals, four-legged animals, birds, insects, worm, germ, plants. So vikarma causes suffering and de degradation. So another type of karma is just called karma, pious activities. Being kind to others, feeding the homeless, looking after the orphans, giving donations to them, charitable works, Right. Helping the old ladies across the streets. This is all karma. Right. The results of karma means one gets happiness in this life and in the next life one gets increased material happiness. I mean, the, what next life one's born in a very pious or wealthy family. If one has a lot of pious activities, a lot of karma, they can be elevated to the heavenly planets. Understand, Yuri? Become like devas. Demigods, you can live in the abode of the moon god or the sun god, or right? and there they have the swarga. One enjoys unlimited material enjoyment there, but that is also temporary. So, vikarma, sinful action or prohibited activity gives suffering, but that is also temporary. The Vedas describe hell, but unlike the Christians and the Muslims, we do not believe hell is eternal. How long you go there, according to your activities, that much you did vikarma or bad activities, that long you have to suffer. And also the heavenly planets, also that is temporary. 
like the descriptions of heavenly enjoyment given in the Quran, the Bible, and also Rig Veda and other places. So heaven also exists, but we believe this is also material. Heaven is also temporary. How long you stay there according to the results of your actions? So actually, both sinful activity and pious activities are both the cause of repeated birth and death. Right, Sita? Right. Means if I do bad activities, I am forced to take another material body to suffer. If I perform good material activities, then I am forced to take another material body to enjoy the result. Of course, going to heaven and go is better than going to hell, no doubt about it. <laughs> but from a neutral point of view, they are both the same because both are the cause of birth and death. So how can I become free from the cycle of birth and death? Then some people take the the philosophy of akarma, the non-performance of action. Okay, if doing good activities is the cause of repeated birth and death, and doing bad activities is the cause of repeated birth and death. Then some people think, well, maybe I can just avoid all karma altogether by cessation of all activity. Right, Yuri? Like the Buddhists? What the Buddhists do? You go to the Himalaya, or the yogis go to the Himalaya, some cave, and there they practice akarma, cessation of material activity. Julie, what do you think of that idea? Are you, we can't hear you, your microphone's not on. So chapter 3, verse 19, we're speaking about that, if you have Bhagavad Gita today. Chapter 3, verse 19. So Arjuna also suggests this to Krishna in the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Because Arjuna was put in a very difficult situation. Arjuna is a king, he is a warrior, and his family has been fought, placed into a religious war. It means now he has to fight. But Arjuna is thinking, what should I do? If I have to perform karma by fighting, then I kill my relatives, my cousin brothers, even his guru was on the other side. So he thought, this is terrible. Because these, per these people I should be serving, how can I enjoy the kingdom which is covered in the blood of those persons who are like worshipful for me? So Arjuna thought, I cannot perform my karma, my prescribed activity, so I better I live by begging no? because I can give up everything and go to the forest and live by arms, live by begging from others. So Arjuna also suggests a karma, non-performance of action. No, like you ask any beggar, what do you do? What's your job? Nothing. No job, no activity. So Krishna says this philosophy of akarma is also futile, useless. Because no one can refrain from action even for a second. Right? Everyone's breathing. Breathing is also karma. Right, Sita? Sleeping. What's he doing? He's sleeping. That means he's also doing something. So there's no one in this creation who can remain without action even for a moment, Krishna says. Even breathing, even drinking water, even digestion digestion of food. Right, Yuri? Heart is pumping, blood is moving, something's going on always. Mind is thinking, eyes are looking, ears are hearing. So actually no one can refrain without action even for one moment, Krishna says. So if someone asks, then good activities are useless, bad activities are useless, and non-performance of action is also impossible. So what should I do? How to become free from the cycle of cause and effect? So the Buddhists have their activities, their result, you know, their belief. 
Their belief of perfection is complete nirvana, cessation of all material existence. But this is also imaginary because the soul always exists. There's never a stage of non-existence. The yogis try to become free from karma also by performance of yoga activities. The karma is very busy trying to negate past sinful activities by performance of good activities. So everyone, all different philosophies in the world, giving some solution for freedom from the cycle of birth and death. Right? Some Christians say, doesn't matter what you do, we're all saved by grace, just believe in Jesus. But if that is true, then why we see everyone, all the Christians who are following Jesus, none of them have become free from sinful activity, right? They're still performing action. So solution given by Krishna in the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Actually, everyone's struggling very hard just to become free from the results of karma. What does everyone want, Julie? Everyone wants enjoyment should come and misery should go away. All our activities are for that cause. I experience the misery of hunger. So let me perform another activity, become free from that by eating. I'm very cold now in Vrindavan. Today is record cold, right? Five degrees. I think tomorrow is even worse. I think tomorrow is three degrees, right? This is one misery. So we perform. I put on my electric blanket. I wear five hats, three scarves, ten jumpers, and I become try to become free from misery by that. But all these have a fault. None of these type of actions can fully free us from the miseries of this world. No, the politicians are promising something. The doctors are promising something. All right, we have one friend in Mayapur, Mr. Health, Sahadev. Now he's dying from gangrene. The doctors cannot save themselves, how they'll save us. So the doctors are saying, I will help you become free from miseries, the politicians. Everyone feels suffering, they think if I marry, I'll become free from suffering. Right? But the problem is when we marry, then a thousand more problems also come. Julie's married. Divorced. Okay. Boyfriend. Okay, then there's, there's a chance she can become happy then. Like, people feel lonely, therefore they think, oh, this is misery, let me marry. The poor shopper is thinking. But that also brings a million problems with it. So Krishna gives this solution to all this. No? That is third chapter of Bhagavad Gita. So you see, third chapter, 19 verse. Tasmat asakta satatam kajam karma samachana asakta asakta here achatam karma param aknoti purushaha. Therefore, Krishna says, always perform your prescribed duties without attachment. By working in this way, a person attains liberation from the endless cycle of birth and death. Okay. Saintly kings such as Janak, who are qualified for Jnana, attain supreme perfection in the form of bhakti by performing their prescribed duties. Oh. Am I missing a page? Therefore, in consideration of setting an ideal for people in general, you should also perform your prescribed duties but without attachment. So the problem is everyone is acting and thinking, I will enjoy the results of my activities. Right, Julie? This is the knot of karma. Everyone thinking very hard, I will work, I will get money, then I will enjoy that. I will enjoy the results of my work. Some people thinking, I will marry, I will enjoy that. 
I will buy a house, then I will enjoy that. I will buy a car, I will enjoy that. Manorama thinking, I will go to Hawaii, I will enjoy that. Manorama goes off. They won't have their own plans for enjoyment. So when we try to enjoy the results of activity, we become bound by the result. Understand, Yuri? Right. So becoming attached to the result of action, this is called the knot of karma. The knot of karma. I will enjoy this world. I will enjoy my actions. I will enjoy my body. I will enjoy my senses. And in a subtle way, I will enjoy my mind. I will enjoy anything that is the cause of bondage. So attachment to the result, this is the cause of all suffering. So inherently, no activity has any fault. Inherently, no activity is especially good or bad. But what we do with the result, you know, that, will, that is the cause of happiness or distress. So, in this third chapter, Krishna is promoting the theory of karma mishra bhakti. You know, Niskaram karma yoga. The results of all one's activities, instead of trying to enjoy that result, one should offer the result to Krishna. Because no one can be without action even for a second. So when Arjuna gave, gave the theory, I will renounce from fighting, then to dissuade Arjuna from this activity, Krishna spoke this philosophy of Niskaram Karma Yoga. Because Arjuna gave the argument, but Arjuna, even if you go to the forest, you will still take your nature with you. Four natures in this world. The Brahminical Swabhav, Brahminical, not inimical. Those persons who are naturally inclined towards religious life, study of the scriptures, performance of austerities, controlling the mind and senses. Right? Purushottam, we're hoping some of those qualities will develop in you soon. Some people naturally inclined to that. Some people naturally inclined, like Arjuna, Chatris, fighters, administrators, is that even a word? Administrators, like politicians, leaders. This is also one nature, military, those of a militaristic nature. Those who are inclined towards business, that is the Vaishya Svabhavs, and the Sudras, those who just like to work for others. Okay, Yuri, understanding? This is the caste system. Caste system that we find in India, actually the original caste system is not by birth. The caste system is by qualities. So everyone has these four qualities. Like even the communists in Russia, they try to make everyone one. All our robotics, all our workers. They tried to, like, also in Kampuchea, they tried destruction of the social order. No high, no low, everyone the same. But we still, we see, still in these societies, still came the religiously minded, those inclined towards the military, those inclined towards business, and those inclined towards work. So Krishna explained, one cannot abandon one's nature, because nature is always with us. So what's the use of Arjuna going to the forest and living his life as a beggar when he carried the same nature? So Krishna says, one who makes a show of renunciation but meditates on the object of the senses, that person is a hypocrite. So giving up work, this is foolishness. 
because one cannot give up one's attachment so easily like that just by renunciation. So in third canto, third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says it's better to remain and adopt, embrace one's own nature and use that nature for perfection. How simply, no matter what position one's in, one can offer the results of one's actions to Krishna. Right? Like if I'm a Brahmana, okay, maybe Julie not understand too much. But, you know, if one's a Brahminical nature, one maintains one's life by teaching, by giving lectures, by worshipping, by engaging others in worship. If one performs all that for the happiness of Krishna, he can achieve perfection. If one is a warrior, a soldier, one can fight for Krishna, like police. Right? If police adopts a theory of non-violence, then society will collapse. <laughs> so violence can also be used for the benefit of others. So Krishna explained to Arjuna, Simply going to the forest as a beggar will not solve your problems. That is your nature. So better fight. But fight, but don't be attached to victory or defeat. Fight for me. If the businessman doing very, always engaged in making money, even in dreams, how can I get more wealth? How can I increase my business? The, the Vaishya can also achieve perfection by adopt, using that nature in Krishna's service. I will do business, but the result of business is not for my enjoyment. The result of business is for Krishna's enjoyment. And the Sudra who's working as a cashier in 7 up, what's it called? 7 Seven Eleven. The street sweeper. The secretary the mechanic, the bus driver, they can also achieve perfection by simply offering the results of their activities to Krishna. As a result, one will automatically become free from lust because he's thinking this is not mine to enjoy. And that much one is free from lust and automatically the inherent nature of the soul will manifest. Understand, Yuri? So this is called this yoga of karma, the yoga of action. Yoga means to join two things together. Yeah. So when your activities are joined to Krishna, right? This is not pure devotion. This is not pure devotion. But this stage, in the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, this stage is called Niskara Karma Yoga. Okay. Niskara means without desire. No? Performing all actions in this world without desire. Why? Because the result is given to Krishna. So it's called without desire. Any questions, Yuri? When are you going to come to India? Yuri, when do you come here? <laughs> I'm going to India in February. Oh, very good. You will come and visit us in Vrindavan? I'm thinking about it. Don't think about it. It's the only reason you should come to India. Yeah, I know, but I'm going to South, but I'm, I'm fly out from Delhi, so maybe I should visit. What day you come to India? Uh, ten, uh, leaving here 10th. Of what? 10th of February. 10th of February? Uh, February. Okay. Yeah, but going? I'll be in South. What? I will be in South, South of India. Why? To learn Ayurveda. My God. You could do much better than that. I'm going to, I'm flying out from Delhi, so... What day you fly out? Uh, end of March, uh, not end, uh, I can't remember, 18th or something like that, I let you know. Okay, come and visit <laughs> us for a week. 
Okay, so Yuri's making many plans for enjoyment. I haven't got to go to South <laughs> India, Afghanistan. But question comes, who's she doing it for? Yuri, who are you doing all this for? For yourself, right? That causes uh... problems. Definitely, it don't say, of course it is. <laughs> anyway, so, anything we do for ourselves, that is the cause of bondage, because we think I am the enjoyer of my reactions. Yeah? So, this is first step. This is third chapter of Bhagavad Gita. You know, once you become, try to become free from that mentality, I will enjoy my actions. I will enjoy my body. I will enjoy that which below is connected to the mind and body. So the first step, instead of trying to enjoy those activities, one should just offer them to Krishna. Okay? Then karma becomes transformed to niskara, karma yoga. Right? Yuri, who do you cook for? Krishna. <laughs> that wasn't very convincing. Right? Cooking. No one can avoid cooking. Everyone has to cook every day. Yeah. But even a vegan diet, that is also full of violence, right? You're chopping the spinaches, killing the potatoes, boiling the grains. So even the vegan diet it's also full of faults, full of violence, right? Which most people think is a very good activity, I am vegan. But if you look at it more closely, that activity is full from beginning of an end to fault. Because you are taking from the vegetables, taking from the trees, taking from the society, taking from the farmers, taking from the environment. No, then you have to pay that back because you are taking so much, then you that's the action then you'll have to give it back in some form or another, in the form of reaction to activities. So every activity is, there can no be avoidance of action and reaction. Even walking, right? but the reaction of walking, you are killing many insects, you are breathing so much air, then we will have to pay that back to the last rupee, the last cent. So by acting in a, with a mentality of detachment from enjoying the result, one automatically becomes liberated. Because desire is the cause of repeated birth and death. So of course in the beginning one cannot give up all activities. So Krishna recommends this first step. Perform all actions. Like Guru Dev would say, if you're married, stay married. If you're not married, don't marry. <laughs> <laughs> he would say, if you're working, keep working. Okay? Look out, maintain your wife, maintain your children. Guru Dev would give this advice, but everything should have connection to Krishna. Otherwise, eating, sleeping, and all these activities, and also works very hard day and night. A bee also works very hard collecting day and night. Dog also very hard looking, where is lady, dog. He also has affection for wife and children. So the first step out of this cycle of attachment, this cycle of bondage, is offering the results of Krishna. No? Then that becomes linked to Krishna. Yoga means to link. No? So, are there any questions from anyone? Any questions? So Krishna gives the example here of Janak Maharaj. In verse 20, <clears throat> Janak Maharaj, very famous, he's known as Videha. There's two or three Janak Maharaj. But here is refer referring to one king named Janak Maharaj. He was so detached from the body, people called him Videha. Videha means no body. It's no, no corporal existence, no material existence. So actually he was perfect in knowledge. Knowledge means the difference between the soul and the body. That is perfect knowledge. So even Janak Maharaj, who had perfect knowledge, even he also following this system of Niskam Karma Yoga, 
<coughs> yeah, the result of Niskam Karma of Yoga, the performance of performing one's actions without attachment, the result of this is perfect knowledge. And Krishna says, but even one who has perfect knowledge, he still follows this process. And Krishna gives the example of Janak Maharaj. Yeah? You see, chapter 3, verse 20. Sender kings such as Janak, who were qualified for Gyan, also attain perfection in the form of Bhakti by performing their prescribed duties. It means without attachment. There's many stories of Janak Maharaj. No? Janak Maharaj, even though he was a king, he was too much attached to transcendental knowledge, like discussions like we're having here. No? So one day he announced a very huge religious assembly, Dharma Sabha, and people would discuss all these things. So when Janak Maharaj announced, everyone, all saintly persons, please come for some discussion on spiritual life, what is the meaning of the scriptures, then many, many people came. So amongst one of them was Astavakra Rishi. Asta means eight. He was deformed in eight places. Vakra means bent. Like Kubja, Trivakra, Hunchback. So she was bent in only three places. Astavakra was bent in eight places. He said when he was a child in his mother's womb, his father was pronouncing the Vedic mantra. Then in the womb, the child said, Father, you are pronouncing wrong. You should say like this. When his father became angry, you little rascal, I curse you, be bent, be formed in eight places. So when he was born, he was like that. But Astavakra was a great knowledgeable person. So when he heard that Janak Maharaj was calling one religious festival, then Astavakra began to walk there. And because he was deformed, of course, very troublesome for him to walk. So many, many weeks he was walking and walking and walking. So when he entered the assembly of Janak Maharaj, you know, he was walking in his own st style. Everyone began laughing at him. Ha <laughs> ha! So very loudly they were all laughing. Then Astravakra began laughing more loudly than all of them. Then Janet Maharaj, he asked, Oh Rishi, please explain why you are laughing so loudly. And Astavaka said, I'm not laughing. I'm crying. Why? Astavaka said, I thought here would be a discussion of jnana, knowledge. Jnana means we are not the body. So I see this is not an assembly of saintly persons. This is a shoemaker's convention. <laughs> Understand Haribaba? Shoemaker only knows leather, leather, skin, bodies. This is good leather, bad leather. So this is no yeah, this is no religious assembly. This is a shoemaker's convention. Because all you see is this body. You don't know, you cannot see the soul. And all became shamed and all hung their head. That is that Janak Maharaj Krishna talks about in chapter 20, uh, verse 20. Another story of Janak Maharaj. Janak Maharaj was giving lecture. He was a great knowledgeable person. So, so many sadhus and renunciants, yogis, brahmacharis were listening from him. Then someone came and announced, Janak Maharaj, your house is burning, your palace. Your wife and children are all being burned to death. But Janak Maharaj, he did not move one muscle. He kept giving the lecture. But all the other <laughs> sannyasis and sadhus, they all got up and ran because 
their underwear was there, their towels were there, their bags were there. So they all ran there to save their towels and bags and everything. But Janak Maharaj not ran because he knew even the whole world is lost, I am not lost. Even the whole world is burnt, I am not burnt because I am not the body. This is Janak Maharaj. No? So Janak Maharaj famous is a, a personality with perfect knowledge. So not that I should only follow this Niskam Karma Yoga to achieve that platform. No? Not that I should perform this Niskam Karma Yoga to achieve freedom from lust, freedom from desire, and ultimately freedom from having a material body. So this Niskarma Karma Yoga is not just practice in the stage of practice, is that even English? But Krishna says no, because even those who have achieved perfection, they still follow this. And Krishna gives the example of Janak Maharaj. Hmm? One. Therefore, Krishna says, Mm. Always perform your prescribed duties without attachment. By working this way, a person attains liberation from the endless cycle of birth and death. Saintly kings such as Janak, who are qualified for Gyan, attain supreme perfection in the form of Bhakti by performing their prescribed duties. Therefore, in consideration of setting an ideal for people in general, you should also perform your prescribed duties but without attachment, Arjuna. And then this famous verse of Bhagavad Gita, Yad Yada Chaliti Shrestas, Tad Tadi Vata Rojana, then what is it? Tad Tad Praman Kurute Lokas Tad Anubhatate. This famous verse of Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, whatever behavior a great personality practices, common persons follow. Whatever standard the leader sets, the whole world follows. No, that is fact, right? If the head of the ashram is perfect in behavior, then everyone has something to follow. If the mother and father are perfect in behavior, then the children have some example to follow, right? Now in America, right, the leaders are all debauchees. Whether Donald Trump or Biden or whoever you vote for, all are abominable persons, full of lust, full of falsehood, full of greed, full of diplomacy, hypocrisy, lies, uncontrolled senses, full of lust. Then the common person's fault. That example. Anyway. So Krishna says even one has perfect knowledge. One should still act in this way. Why? The perfect person has already achieved perfected knowledge. But they're given example to the common persons. So another example Krishna gives is himself. Right? Another example of the ultimate leader, the ultimate example in this philosophy, that is Krishna. So you see third chapter, verse 22, Krishna says, O Partha. No, this is a very sweet name of Arjuna. Partha means son of Prithu. No? That means Krishna has so much connection with Arjuna. Prithu is Arjuna's father, also a great personality. Oh Prithu, Krishna says, I am Parameshwara. Parameshwara means the supreme controller. Okay. Krishna says, I have no need to perform any activities. Does Krishna have to go to work? Does Krishna have to perform creation? Does he have to? Doesn't have to? Does Krishna have to do anything? Prema, what does Krishna have to do? Prema, anything? If we don't do, we have reaction. 
Like we live in the temple, I stop going to Arvin, what happens? Out. Huh? Out. If I don't go to Aati, if I get kicked out of the temple, must be. If I stop chanting Japra, I get kicked out. I have to do action. If we don't work, we don't eat. Right? If we don't work, we have no clothes, no food. The Christians don't like that. There is no need of Krishna to perform any activity at all. No? Krishna says, I have no need to perform any activity. Right? Krishna has no hunger. Krishna has no thirst. Krishna has no sleep. Krishna has no tiredness. Krishna has no desire. So Krishna has no need to do anything. Because there is not, Krishna says, I have no need to perform any action because there is nothing within the three worlds that I cannot attain. Right, Yuri, why you go to work? Why? You have to, right? Because you need many things. You need food, you need water, you need accommodation. You need a house. If you stop serving your husband and children, what will they do? They'll kick you out of the house, right? So we, in this world, we perform activities. We perform action because we need to. We have many desires. We have to. But Krishna has no need to perform any activity. So Krishna says, there's nothing that I cannot attain, and there's also nothing that I need. Right? Krishna does not need anything also. Why? Because he's fully satisfied in himself. These are two qualities of Krishna. Atmaram, Aptakam. Krishna has no unfulfilled desire. Even if he has no desire, but even if he wants something, it comes automatically to him. So Krishna has no desire, and Krishna doesn't need anything because satisfied within himself. Krishna is made of bliss, Krishna is made of ecstasy. There's nothing he needs to give him happiness. So Krishna says, there's nothing I need, there's nothing I cannot attain, there is nothing that I desire to attain. But Krishna says, still I perform, I engage in activities. <laughs> Right? When Krishna comes to this world, he also does many, many actions, many activities. Right? Krishna also married right, Rukmini, Satyabhama. Krishna also married, Krishna also had children. Krishna also performed his duties. Right? Like if you read 10th Kandu Bhagavatam, early in the morning, what does Krishna do when he wakes up? Maybe he takes bath and meditates. Who does Krishna meditate on? Come on. On himself. On himself. Well, the scriptures say you should think of Krishna. So early in the morning, Krishna wakes up, takes bath, and what does he do, Yuri? Meditates on himself. <laughs> because all the scriptures say to think of Krishna. So this is an example of Krishna's activities, right? Then Krishna also gives charity. Krishna goes and bows to his mother and father, Vasudev, Deraki. Krishna gives many cows in charity. Krishna feeds the brahmanas. Krishna takes care of the poor people, the bums and all these guys. Krishna does yagya. Krishna do what you read, 10th canto. Krishna also performing many, many activities. Why? He doesn't need anything. He doesn't have to do anything. He has no desire. Why are you performing all these activities? To give example of selfless action. You know, so Krishna gives two examples in Gita. Janak, as the perfect human being, and also of himself, as God. So in both cases, Krishna gives both examples. Even if one is achieved perfection, one should still act with this mentality. Why? But the deliberated soul has no desires, no need to achieve anything. But still they give example. So Krishna may say to Arjuna, even you, you have perfect knowledge, still you should fight. Because that is your duty. But fight without attachment, offer the results to me. 
Yadahi aham, fateyam, I'm going blind. Have, have some new glasses there somewhere. So Krishna said, if ever I fail to vigilantly engage in my duty, common persons would certainly follow my example in all respects and become degraded. Okay, Manorama, setting the perfect example there in Hawaii. I don't know why you're not here. You have money, you have everything, but no Brindavan, I'll go to Hawaii. The same thing you've been doing for 20 years, just doing the same thing again and again, no change. Okay. So Krishna is ultimately Guru of the Three Worlds. What time we started? 8 o'clock. Okay, we'll finish up here. No, 8 o'clock we started. Okay. So Krishna... Okay, so Krishna is called Guru. Guru means who leads by... Example. So who is the original Guru? Huh? Krishna. Bande Krishna Jagat Guru. Krishna is the original spiritual master of the whole world. Why Krishna is Guru? Not just because he gives instructions, but because whatever he speaks, he also doing. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also. So Krishna said, I give example to the whole creation. Krishna doing many activities without attachment. <clears throat> he creates us. But we do rubbish and go down. Krishna feels distressed. No. Because he performs all activities, even the activities of creation. The activities of giving us independence. <clears throat> Krishna also does that without attachment. If I did not perform my duty, even if we don't wake up for more life, Krishna will be there. Then all people would become degraded. And indirectly, Krishna said, I would be the cause of everyone's degradation. In this way, I would become instrumental in the destruction of the entire human population. O Arjuna, Ignorant persons perform their activities with attachment. But those who are wise, yes, understand Prema? Ignorant people perform activities with attachment. Those who are wise should also perform action, but without attachment. Why? Desire just to give example, desiring to instruct everyone. Okay? Bauram, what doing? Prima, come here and talk to Balaam just for two minutes. What's Balaram doing? Что делает Баларам? Баларам, микрофон. Баларам, включите микрофон. Микрофон. What's he doing? Что вы делаете? Я сейчас работаю. I'm working now. You've been working for 12 years and still working. Still not coming. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I just gave the last year. Only at the end of the year, I made all my debts. Paid for my debts. After 10 years, you couldn't say you could save even more than all of the dollars. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Баларам, try to come this October for the party. Баларам, попытайтесь приехать в этом время на Арктику. Okay. Хорошо? He's still with his mother and father. Он все еще с матерью и с отцом? Мама у меня умерла, а отец только остался. Мама у меня умерла. И врачи говорят, что вроде недолго осталось. Немного осталось. Yes, and father also has friends that the doctor said that it's not so much for much. Okay, try to serve your father. Okay, try to serve your father. Okay, try to serve your father. Still try to come and look to him. Yes. Chanting every day? 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 Every day?
Да, но по-разному я даже 16 не повторяю часто. Есть, есть, пожалуйста, именно 16. Хорошо, попытайтесь попытайтесь 16. Окей, anyone have any question about the class? Why is it echoing? I don't know. Should I translate it? No. Anyone have question, Yuri? Did you read that book we gave you, Shikshamrita? The big yellow one? Oh, you didn't take it, I remember, yes, you declined. You took this, the Bhagavad Gita? I got the Japanese one. <laughs> Okay, you try to read it. Keep chanting, keep doing the courtesy. We try to study this a little bit. Okay, we've been a bit lazy, so we'll try to do these classes once a week. Okay? Okay. Any question from anyone? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Who's Caesar? Where is? Caesar, what is? Oh, many people. Hi. Where are you from? Mexico. Which which part? What is? Yes. <laughs> really? Okay. Your chat you're vegetarian? Caesar? Caesar, you're Sorry, vegetarian? Sir. Are you vegetarian? Caesar, turn on, turn on, turn on the microphone. Okay, maybe we should start some Spanish class as well. Okay, we'll do. We'll try and do one English, one Spanish class. Maybe one Russian. Class. Okay, Hari Bol. Thank you, Hari Krishna. Albert Marash, I think. I think that Julie had a question. Okay, what's her question? Well, she has a question, she has to speak. No, I didn't have a question, I just had no question. <laughs> okay, true. Julie, you've got to become 100% vegetarian, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, no excuses. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Honey ball.